Hi, I'm Kate Smith, and this is Planned Parenthood Presents The State of Abortion. Here to discuss with me today is U.S. Senator Maisie Hirono, who represents the great state of Hawaii. <laughs> Senator, thank you so much for being here. Glad to be with you. Senator, as we're talking, it's been about a day and a half since polls closed in the midterm elections. What are you making of the results that you've seen so far? That abortion was on the ballot literally in maybe five states, California, uh, Vermont. These are states that made sure that abortion will continue to be a right that uh, their citizens have. So in some of these states, abortion literally was on the ballot. There are some dozen states that restrict or totally outlaw abortion. And as these states continue to not provide that access, my hope is that that, they, that there will be mobilization to change, to change those laws in those states. So that, that kind of activism and mobilization is going to be happening more and more at the state level. And that's a, a very grassroots kind of organizing that will take place. So I have high hopes that that kind of mobilization is going to occur throughout the country and that we will make the kind of changes in all those states that do not allow abortion access to change those laws. Senator, you've been an abortion rights champion, a reproductive health champion for your yes. entire career, not just the jobs. <laughs> you have over a dozen states, I think, that right now that does not uh, allow for abortions, that in fact criminalizes abortion, criminalizes the providers. So as long as that is the state of the situation, you're going to have millions of women in this country, um, people who uh, become pregnant, that will not have access to what I consider to be a fundamental right. And I have doctors who participate in my roundtables, and they have pointed out to me that even things like maybe insurance companies no longer want to cover abortion services. The ramifications are vast, including, by the way, what are medical schools and places like Texas going to teach? Are they going to teach their soon-to-be doctors um, DNC procedures? Because those procedures can be deemed to be abortion procedures. So again, the chaos and fear uh, is vast all across the country, and that is what I'm getting from my roundtables in Hawaii. Senator, I understand that you have two bills that you're bringing to the Senate that would address some of these issues. Can you tell me a little bit about those? One of my bills is my body, my data, to make sure that uh, reproductive information that can be obtained through websites and, and other ways are protected. They are currently not. And you have entities that can go gather a lot of information from people who try to seek their services. These would be places like the abortion crisis centers. Uh, they are not covered under the kind of uh, uh, protection rules that we have for hospitals, for example. And so my body, my data would prohibit the use of this kind of data for, by other entities. The other important thing is, that, is to make sure that contraception is available, and that is a bill that I, I have with Ed Markey of Massachusetts to make sure that contraception services, products are made available. We need to protect those avenues of access too. There's been talk about if abortion is banned, what happens next? And contraception is one of the things that have come up in your mind. Is that, is that a real threat to you? Yes. Because of our Supreme Court, who was totally, in my view, um, extreme ideologically driven in the Dobbs decision, but you have two Supreme Court justices that would be Alito and Thomas, who have already signaled, but particularly Thomas, that uh, contraception may be on their hit list. So uh, especially Justice Thomas, they signal that, that they are interested in revisiting certain, certain cases. And they, they've done that. That's why we need to pro provide protections for contraception. And the bill that you're bringing forward, would that assist in that in case the Supreme Court does eventually go after contraception? That is the uh, intent. And how exactly would that work? Uh, we have a lot of in the weeds folks in our audience. So can you tell us how that would work? Uh, we would make sure that, that for example, uh, in, in the bill that contraception services for example, will be provided and that people who uh, allow uh, contraception to be bought will not be prosecuted. There's a whole range of ways that uh, these kinds of services and methods can be protected, and that's what this bill does. And as you've started to circulate this among your colleagues, have you gotten support? What does that look like? I don't think we have a single Republican on the bill yet. <laughs> that is not surprising. 
If you are a politician that doesn't agree with abortion and you try to ban abortion, how can you in the same breath not agree with access to contraceptions? How does that make sense? Well, a lot of the uh, positions that are taken by people who talk about they, they want to be free not to wear a mask, but it's okay to force women to have children. So uh, uh, being consistent is not a uh, driving issue for all of these people, I have to say. And, uh, and calling them hip hypocrites has absolutely no effect in my view. <laughs> so the rest of us who uh, want to uh, really acknowledge a, in, an indi individual's right to control our own bodies, we need to push forward. Senator Grono, thank you so much for all the work that you do and for spending some time with us today. Thank you. We're in this together. Thank you so much.